most companies are good, honest websites anyway. But because there's these open review platforms out there that just people that are upset, they just go try to find some place to complain. Ultimately, what happens is that if you don't do anything to offset those complaints, your reputation just takes a nosedive on these different open review platforms. From an outsider's perspective, you look like a bad company and it'll hurt your business. We just basically confirmed that there is this idea of persuasion, and people do in fact trust and prefer those top search results and they trust and prefer those websites with positive reviews on multiple platforms because of the social proof surrounding basically multiple votes, if you will. Hi, everyone. I'm Scott Branley. And I'm DJ Sprague. And welcome to the e-commerce traffic and conversion podcast. In today's episode, we're going to talk about persuasion, which is one of the Cialdini principles. In fact, he wrote an entire book about it. I got it right there here, it DJ. Is. There it is. It's a great book. If you have not read it, if you're a Cialdini fan, highly recommend you read this book. But let's just talk about what it is uh, in, in the elevator pitch. So according to Dr. Cialdini, persuasion is the environment or the context in which a message is delivered that creates persuasion, either positive or negative. So if the environment or context in which that message is delivered is positive, then they're going to be persuaded in the in the positive to make a affirmative decision. If it's in the negative, then obviously they're going to be persuaded uh, not to make a decision in your favor. So that's the in a nutshell what persuasion is. And we actually Scott and I went down and met with Dr. Cialdini, and we did an exclusive interview with him. And one of the questions we asked him was about persuasion. So we'd like to play that right now. And then we'll chat about it for a minute. Here it is. So would you say that reviews can be both a tacit and a direct endorsement for a brand? Yes. And the way that they are tacit, I think, involves the idea of persuasion, that they serve as cues as to what I should believe or what I should approve and choose before I ever get to information about the offer itself. Just the fact that a lot of people have chosen that offer, that authorities are associated with this, uh, uh, this evaluation and so on. Um, that's enough to cause people to have a favorable attitude before they ever encounter the message, the, com- the persuasive message associated with the act. What are your thoughts on search rankings in Google or or Bing, pick your search engine? How do you feel people perceive and act upon those top search listings versus the bottom search listings? And how does that play into your principle of persuasion and preconditioning, if you will? Yeah. So there's no question about it that they, they assign greater weight to those that are in the top uh, echelon the first three or five or so, Mm -hmm. uh, that's where they uh, assume that there's the greatest gravitas, there's the greatest weight, there's the greatest credibility and uh, and positive outcomes from from those people because of the position that they're in. uh, There's good research that uh, the way that, uh, for example, on store shelves, those products that are put in a place that are easy to reach and are easy to see get the most choice just because of the position that they're in. People assume, oh, well, these are the ones that were put there because they are the the ones that are most popular. Mm -hmm. So, Scott, what did you think of that video from Dr. Cialdini regarding persuasion and search results? Well, I first off, I don't think a lot of people think about it at all, right? Especially business owners or website owners, just how much influence there is in the results that you see in search and how much you can impact them 
by having ratings and reviews and even just showing up towards the top of the search results. You know, um, we've done several different um, studies internally where we've surveyed online consumers and we've we've come up with some pretty cool statistics right dj yeah why why don't you share one of those studies Um, because it's such a fascinating concept because we know obviously that the majority of clicks go to the top search results but we really don't often talk about the psychology of why that happens and as dr cialdini was talking about it's really the credibility that those top search results have that causes people to not only click on them, but to believe in them and trust them more. And that's kind of the the real, I guess, aha here. The real epiphany is it's not just that they're more convenient because of the top, it's because they're more trusted. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the environment in which they're delivered is a more trustworthy, uh, persuasive environment and that's why they probably also get a higher conversion rate, not just a higher click rate. Right. So, yeah, why don't you share that, that research, uh, Scott? Because that was a really fascinating study that we did a couple of years ago that really talks about this, this concept. Yeah, well, and one thing I like about what we do at Shopper Approved is we are, what we think about is how can I amplify the trust, right? How can I get people to trust a website more by adding more credibility, more authority, right? And it's, so it's so there's different aspects. It's kind of like a multidimensional world, right? Like, so one aspect is ranking in search, but another aspect mm-hmm. is authority in search. How do I improve my authority? Well, I can add ratings and reviews on my listings. I can add ratings in my pay-per-click listings. I can add... Um, seller ratings and product reviews and video reviews in different places in Google. So so there's ways that you can amplify this persuasion that Dr. Cialdini calls it, or um, we, we sometimes call it pre-conversion, right? Because we're almost converting them to buy before they ever reach the website. And Right. Um, you know, he he came up with the term persuasion, but it's all it's a type of persuasion, right? Ultimately. So we so persuasion and reconversion. Yeah, exactly. So we did some studies and the first one, the first question we asked was um how many because we wanted to know as far as like reviews online, because there's multiple review platforms. Um we're just one of several, but, um, there's, there's about 12 that are official Google partners that the ratings show up in search, you know, that are high level. Right. So our question that we wanted to ask was how many consumers check multiple review platforms about a company before they choose to buy from them? Do they, do they even check? Right. And the right. we asked 500 consumers online, and 66.3 percent of them said they check multiple websites before they buy. So that was pretty eye opening. That's two thirds yeah. of all e of all uh, consumers online check multiple resources. Right. Right. Um, and and we do the same. Right? I know I do the same. Yeah. Right. Especially if it's a big purchase, you want to make sure that it's that it's legitimate. Right. So then we thought, exactly. Then we thought, okay, let's take that to the next level. So we asked if, if a company has a good rating on one site and a bad rating on another, which one do you trust? And 69% said they would trust the site with the good reviews. So that's pretty cool. And then 31% said they would trust the site with the bad reviews. So you've got your glass half full, glass half empty consumers out there right but it was cool to know that that almost 70 percent would trust the site with the with the positive reviews yeah and so then we asked if there's, if there's only one right if there's only one with positive right. and one with negative 69 percent are going with the positive 31 percent are going with the negative if there's only two different review sites showing right so then we asked okay if a company has 
good ratings on one site and then bad ratings on two other sites, which one do you go with? So then they said 30, so 35.33% said they would still trust the site with the good reviews. So it flipped, right? It almost went yep. opposite because 64.67% said they would trust the the bad websites. So that yep. was pretty eye opening. And then, yeah, and then it is the last question we asked. If you were searching a, for a company and they had mixed reviews across multiple review sites, how do you decide if it's a trustworthy website? And we gave them a multiple choice option. 64% said um, they would average out the good and bad reviews to make a decision. 23% said they would give um, the overall bad reviews more weight. And 12 for almost 13 percent said they would tend to give the positive reviews more weight. So, so that was interesting too. So, they just average it out. If you have multiple review platforms showing different things, they try to come up with an average. Yep. And this is why it's, it's almost like the uh, preponderance of the evidence, right? So, in, in a court of law, <laughs> we're going to look at the preponderance of the evidence. If there's a preponderance, it says, well, the evidence clearly skews this direction. And in, in that survey with, if there's, you know, um, a website uh, with, with good ratings and, and two with bad, they're going to trust the two with bad. Mm-hmm. That's the preponderance of the evidence, right? So they're going to go with the social proof that's saying, well, there's two sites with negative reviews one site with positive, I'm going with the majority vote. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important, obviously, uh, to manage your reputation online to make sure that you're sending and collecting and getting reviews on multiple review platforms so that you're skewed in the positive in your favor versus skewed in the negative against you. And it's just great to see statistically that that's how the human mind thinks. I mean, that's how they look at review sites. Right. I agree with you. I mean, that's why we built uh, review destinations in Chopper Approved, right? Because we saw this problem and we could, you know, a lot of websites out there have bad reviews on, on several open review platforms. They don't know how to fix it, but we do, right? We just send right. customers to those to those sites after they buy And, and they, and what happens over time is by actively sending uh, actual customers that have made a purchase from your website to these other sites, then over time, it just naturally raises your reputation across the board and you become a trusted site, which most companies are good, honest websites anyway, right? But because there's these open review platforms out there that just people that are upset, they just go try to find some place to complain. Um, Ultimately what happens is that if you don't do anything to offset those complaints, your reputation just takes a nosedive on these different open review platforms. And from a, from an outsider's perspective, you look like a bad company and it'll hurt your business. Yeah, that's that's the unfortunate truth. And that's all very true. So then we wanted to kind of go to another level and we did another survey because we really wanted to understand statistically how people think about search results and how they uh, you know have a preference over the top search results and why. So again, uh, we asked, uh, I think it was 600 US adults in this survey and the question was, if you asked a product question in Google and the answer came up at the top of the search results, how likely are you to visit that website? 73% were highly or extremely likely. So the breakdown was 35% extremely likely and 38% highly likely. So again, that's telling you that 73% are highly or extremely likely to visit that website that came up at the top of the search results. 
And again, it goes back to what Dr. Childing is talking about, which is trust. They simply believe that that must be the more trusted website. And that's why Google served it at the top of the search results. Right. So then we asked another question. Would a website that answered your question and showed up at the top of the Google search results increase the perceived credibility of that website? So again, we wanted to kind of drill further into this and understand if, if credibility was in fact the, the issue. And 80% said yes. 80% said that a website that was at the top of the search results had more credibility. So that proved out our hypothesis. And the third question in this series was, what percent of the time do you click on the first organic search result in Google that offers an effective answer to your product question? And again, 80% click on the first organic search result that answered their product question. So now we've got all this data saying that the top search result or top search results have more credibility and people prefer and tend to click on those most. And of course, we know from click research that that is in in fact true, that uh, the majority, 69% of the clicks on page one go to the top five search results. So we just basically confirmed that there is this idea of persuasion and people do in fact trust and prefer those top search results and they trust and prefer those websites with positive reviews on multiple platforms because of the social proof surrounding basically multiple votes if you will yep so the the basic ideas are make sure you have a positive reputation across the web and make sure that you have a lot of um, listings that search results that show up at the top of search. Those are kind of the secrets to, to okay. pre suading or pre converting consumers before they reach your site. And it actually increases the click through rate, the traffic. I mean, there's a lot of positive uh, KPIs that are impacted by doing that. And so it, yeah. it's a really, yeah, there, there are. it's a really powerful strategy. You've got to be at the top of the search results. Uh, You've got to show up with review stars to have that social proof and credibility. And you have to answer the search queries uh, quickly and easily in those those search results. So yeah, that's it. Um, For me, Scott, that's a wrap, unless you have anything else to say about persuasion. No, I think we're good. Hopefully you guys got something valuable out of that and we will catch you on the next video.